ओम शांति देर इज अग डोंट बिकम बेटर बिकम बेटर यस एवरीबडी टेल्स अस एंड वी हैव बीन टोल्ड फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम दैट डोंट बिकम बेटर बिकम बेटर बट हाउ बिकॉज बाबा सेज यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड द एम एंड यू मस्ट ऑल्सो डिसर्न द मेथड नाउ वी ऑल अंडरस्टैंड दैट द वर्ल्ड इज बिकमिंग बिटर एंड बिटर डे बाई डे यस सो देर इज ओवर्ट बिटरनेस something you can see all day there is latent bitterness which is not being expressed but it is there so how do you move from this place of being bitter to being better so in the murli today baba says that the opposite of bitter is sweet and the meaning of sweet is viceless pure so you can only be sweet when you're viceless you cannot be sweet when you're vicious now the thing is the reason for our sweetness is vice sometimes so you know you see somebody very happy somebody chuckling with joy and then um you know they are um you understand that their capacity for lust ego anger attachment greed is being quenched <laughs> so somebody is getting a lot of you know a uh, ego boost or the whatever they want is being satisfied so the greed is quenched or somebody is into a lot of attachment so you know i love them they love me that mood they are living in or you know lustful people when they when their thirst for lust is quenched they appear very happy sweet on the outside but for how long that is the question because what what time does it take for someone to shift from smiling and sweet to very very bitter and very very violent so we see this paradox in people these days that just now somebody is very sweet and just now you know they get into a spat or they become violent or they become abusive so that is how this world is right now and the reason is the reason for sweetness is vices and the reason for bitterness is also vices so fulfilled vices are the reason for temporary sweetness and unfulfilled wishes desires are the reason for bitterness so this is how the world is going on right now and so we don't know better so we can't do better we continue to be bitter always but baba tells us this whole secret and baba tells us that you see that you think that if you strive harder for the fulfillment of your vices then you will become sweeter day by day yes so people think that okay unfulfilled wishes desires are making me bitter so let me invest all my time thought energy effort into fulfilling those desires so there is a lot of effort put into fulfilling wishes desires and then we think that when those desires will be fulfilled 
then we will become very sweet all day or experience happiness all day or you know we will be well behaved and sane all day but the thing is that you you live in this illusion and then you keep running after fulfillment of wishes desires and that that cannot and doesn't happen all the time and then you know sometimes you have a glimpse of a little fulfillment and then that makes you keep chasing it so have you seen that uh, those people who keep chasing um the mirage in the desert yes they their illusion keeps getting sustained because every time they they start to feel disappointed that there is no water they will suddenly feel an illusion that there's something shining coming ahead and then they keep running after it so we keep running after this mirage that some day some time all our you know unfulfilled wishes desires will get fulfilled and then some day we will have it all and then our lust anger ego attachment greed will never suffer an attack and we will live happily ever after but <laughs> that happily ever after doesn't come and we keep running after it and we keep teaching our children also you know that maybe i was not able to do it well but you will be able to do it well so you keep running after vices and you will be able to fulfill your wishes desires very well but baba says that this is not how you become sweet and that is why you know this frustration this disappointment every time your wishes desires are not fulfilled they result in bitterness and bitterness inside bitterness in the behavior outside and then we are getting bitter and bitter every day more and more bitter every day so baba says that you must understand these things because you see that although we so you know when i i have seen that when i give the course <coughs> at that time uh, the five vices are mentioned lust anger ego attachment and greed and the first time everybody hears it they pull out a notebook and they write it yes so they keep writing and then they say didi what is the fourth one i forgot so then i'll say lust anger ego attachment and greed and then it is jotted down in notebook very nicely and then every time it is mentioned it is heard very nicely that okay these are the five vices and then baba says that this is the cause of sorrow and we also take that down in the notebook that okay five vices are the cause of sorrow but do we feel that that's the question because even though we have heard this over and over again that the five vices are what we call ravan and this ravan is responsible for putting the sita the atma in this uh, cave of sorrow shok vatika so we keep hearing this but do we really feel that vices are the reason for sorrow because again you know it despite hearing it despite saying it what we do is we run after the fulfillment of these vices so we use these vices in anger nevertheless so the big question is do i really understand that vices are the reason for my sorrow and this question is very important because the method to become vicious become virtuous the method to dissolve your vices burn your sins is being taught by baba every day yes and i remember when i came into gyan there was this one friend i had and she said what time do you meditate and i said 4 o'clock 
So she said, you shouldn't meditate at that time. So I said, why? So she said, my mother says that those who meditate at four o'clock become sannyasis. So they will become sannyasis, those who meditate at four o'clock. So you meditate at five, she told me, so that you become a bhagat, but not a sannyasi. <laughs> So, bhakti you do at 5, not at 4, she told me. So, I said that, what if I want to be a sannyasi? So, she said, who wants to be a sannyasi? You keep quiet, now you've lost your mind, okay? So, the thing is, we want to be bhagats, we want to remember Baba, but do we want to become viceless? Do we want to become pure? That's the question. Because Baba says, it's true that Amritvela is the key to becoming a sannyasi. <laughs> now, Baba says, earlier people thought that sannyasi means somebody who leaves the household. Yes, but Baba says, no, sannyasi is somebody who stays in the household but leaves the vices. But anyways, for both the things, what you do is you wake up at four in Amritvela and then you remember Baba and that is what gives you the strength to do away with your vices. So if you want to be viceless, you make the effort for Amritvela. But the thing is, do we want to be that viceless and do I understand how much vices are giving me sorrow because you see that even so uh, you know when we are ill physically what happens is there is a pain that we have to endure to get ourselves treated and there is a pain that you have to endure because of the disease and then you know you have a mental calculation that the pain because of the disease has to be greater than the pain you have to endure to leave the disease or get cured. <laughs> and when you understand that the disease is causing much more pain than the solution, then you go for the treatment. Yes, because you see whenever there is a treatment, there is a physical pain, there is, a, there is a emotional pain because you are attached to the body. There is a financial pain you have to go through, yes, because you will spend money. But then when the pain because of the disease becomes greater than the pain that you have to endure for the treatment, then you go for the treatment, right? So here also the treatment is very simple. Baba tells us that you have to remember me, remember my ho your home, sweet home at Amritvela. Remember the sweet world, new world that's coming at Amritvela. And Baba says you have to take care of your food. So in the Murli today, Baba says that, you know, when you are uh, vicious, you like the food. So, you know, many people in the world who are vicious have given up on meat and alcohol. So, you know, that is something easy to leave in the world also. But the difficulty comes when you say that you don't have to eat onion and garlic and you don't have to eat food prepared by impure people. So people who go into lust, engage in lust, don't have food by them. So Baba says there is a lot of temptation to eat outside and eat onion garlic. <laughs> and Baba says when you are trying to win that over, you must understand that only the food prepared by a Brahmin, by somebody who practices purity of body, mind and wealth, who is a Brahmin? Somebody 
who practices purity of body, mind and wealth. Okay, so somebody whose food is pure, somebody whose organs are pure, there is no vicious activity done through any of the physical organs of the body. That is the purity of the body, the purity of mind, one, one whose mind is only connected to Baba and the purity of money, the way in which you earn money and spend money. Both decide how your money is, whether it is pure or impure. And Baba says, only a Brahmin can serve you pure food. So if you are a Brahmin, the food you prepare is pure food. So Baba says that is a challenge. So that is something that uh, affects your, you know, affects your state of being. So Baba says, when you want to be viceless, what you have to do is you have to remember Baba, remember your home, remember your kingdom at Amritvela. You have to pay very good attention to purity of food. And while living in the family, you have to live like a lotus. Yes, so Baba has given these points in the Murli today that Baba says you live in the family and you settle accounts. So Baba says, you while living in the family, while living in the society, while going for work, there will be karmic accounts. But instead of aggravating those karmic accounts, you keep settling them. That is the way forward. That is the way to a sweet world. That is the way to be sweet. But the question is, who will undertake all this? Because you know, as Brahmins, we all know how to settle and how to aggravate an account. Yes, don't you? So when somebody is shouting at you, if you shout back, you are aggravating the account. <laughs> but if you are in your peace and happiness and purity, and you are stabilized in your inner being, and from that place, even if you feel that you have to say something, you know, it's not necessary that you just have to keep quiet because sometimes you can be very quiet on the external and still you may aggravate the account. <laughs> so that doesn't mean, so staying quiet and increasing the account may not be the same thing or may not be the different thing because sometimes you're very quiet when somebody is shouting at you but you have a lot of negative thoughts and then you are like that pressure cooker which is filling itself inside and then the whistle will blow off or the lid will go off one day so you're going into that state so that is not settling the account similarly when you are in your knowledgeful powerful loveful state so if somebody tells you something and then you also have something to say, maybe you have something to respond to that person at that time. But if it's coming from a place of power and strength and stability, then your a karmic account will get settled. So you see, when there is a fire, you need water to extinguish the fire. So you just have to check whether you, you know, whether you pour the water or you, uh, you know, spray the water or you, <laughs> or you sprinkle the water doesn't matter, but it has to be water. <laughs> so the thing is, when there is, there is a negative behavior, a somebody coming from a place of negativity, you understand that it's a karmic settlement. And what you have to take care is, you are in the opposite energy. So I've even seen uh, instances where I have not stopped explaining. I have kept telling, you know, somebody kept telling me 10 times that this is not the way. And I have 10 times told that person, no, I think this is the way. And I think 
this is how we have to move and we have to do this collectively so i think you should think about this and i have told that 10 times and in the 10th time that has gone inside <laughs> so that has made an impact in the 10th time but the thing is which place are you coming from so if you are coming from a place of you know judgment and anger and irritation and retaliation then what happens even when you're not saying something the karmic account is getting aggravated but if you are if you have practiced enough so if you have taken care to build that internal state if you have paid attention to your food if you have paid attention to your state of purity if you have really burnt your sins in amrit vela then at that time you will be in a position to settle your karmic account by responding through mind word and action that and that response comes from a place of you know power and knowledge and love so that is the way to settle karmic accounts now are we that careful because what happens is um, although you know you understand you understand the method because now baba has given us the discernment so baba is the buddhi vano ki buddhi the bestower of a divine intellect so we have the intellect to discern it's not like you don't know the importance of amrit vela or you don't know that karmic account when it comes it has to be settled not aggravated who amongst you doesn't know this you know that right you know that you know you have to respond from that place and you know that it gets settled you have experience also <laughs> sometimes you have used it you know the effect of food don't you yes but still do we not give in to our urges and our what do you say um our instincts and not follow shrimat so you give in to your vices you give in to your urges you give in to your uh, desires you give in to your uh, place of reaction many times why do you do that because there is discernment but for decision making the intellect has to be very powerful so you discern it but you decide otherwise so do you understand that in that um in that scale where decision making is shown so there are two scales and then there is this pointer in between and that pointer has to be straight so when that pointer is not straight then even if you have weighed the scales you will not be able to decide accurately so that pointer is the buddhi and the buddhi is affected by your state of vicelessness so baba says that you know that this is the method to be viceless you know that viselessness is important but do you really know so you know but do you really know and do you really experience and internalize that lust anger ego attachment greed are my enemy yes that is the question so because you see that although we keep listening again we fall into that trap of lust anger ego attachment greed so when it is not quenched you fairly well realize that this is your enemy yes somebody who doesn't have money you tell them greed is a problem it makes you suffer yes sure greed is a problem it makes me suffer somebody with a lot of money greed is a problem makes you suffer they look at you like you spoke in french and then they say really greed no i have a lot of money it gives me a lot of happiness yes so a lot of greed i strive for money and every time i get it i get a lot of happiness because 
you know, whenever wishes, desires are fulfilled, they again pull you into that illusion that this is the way to happiness. And then again, you keep suffering. So, um, mostly people want to meditate so that they can work on uh, those circumstances which are not favorable to the fulfillment of their wishes, desires. Yes, so you always want to shift that. But Baba says, uh, you better work on those situations where your wishes, desires are fulfilled. <laughs> and there you have to stay in a lot of awareness that although this is fulfilled, this is not good. <laughs> so where do you have to be careful? Where your lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed is not making you suffer in the moment. Yes, so you are behaving in a very egoistic manner, but somebody taking it, somebody is taking it lying down, and that makes you, that gives you an illusion that this is the way to do things. And then you tell other people that, see, I put this person down and he listens to me, you also do the same, they will listen to you. So, that is where one has to discern that, yes, this is the place where I am getting caught up. Now, the thing is, there are these pairs of opposites. There are these pairs of opposites of life and death, fame and defamation, happiness and sorrow. Yes, so Baba says that, um, so in Hindi it is called Maan Apman, Hani Lab, Ninda Stuti, Jai Parajai, Yash Apyash, Jeevan Mrityu. Yes, so these are the uh, pairs of opposites and these pairs of opposites are like a seesaw. So in the seesaw, once you go up, you will go down. So, Baba says that these pairs of opposites are like seesaw. So, in this world, what makes you happy will make you sorrowful tomorrow. That's the paradox. So, the reason for your happiness today is going to be the reason for your sorrow tomorrow. Because happiness comes from the fulfillment of vicious desires in this world. And the same reason for happiness becomes the reason for sorrow when that desire is not fulfilled tomorrow. But the thing is, when you don't work on the reason for your happiness and you don't realize that this is not happiness, this is a trap. Then you wait, you know, you wait, you don't... Uh, so, you know, when relationships are good, when everything is fine, when you are giving all the vices they need, they are supplying you with the vices you need, everything is going fine. At that time, making this effort to embrace purity, embrace, you know, um, uh, waking up at Amritvela, meditating, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone when it is really comfortable. That is what one needs to do. But what you do is, you wait until that time of sorrow comes. And then you, are, you do not have the strength to build your spiritual strength at that time. So, this is why Baba says that you have to understand. So, in today's Murli, Baba says this very beautiful thing which I loved very much. Baba says that sannyasis too have disinterest in their households. Baba says that um, the father explains that this whole world is a river of poison. Everyone experiences sorrow at this time, which is why they dislike it. It is a very dirty world. Therefore, you should have disinterest in it. Sannyasis too have disinterest in their households. Sannyasis don't have disinterest in the world. They have disinterest in the household. <laughs> 
and Baba says they consider a woman to be a serpent and that to live at home is like living in hell and choking. They say this and then renounce it. What? The household or the woman. In fact, both are doorways to hell. So, who is the doorway to hell? The woman and the man both. <laughs> because the soul has become vicious. They don't like living in a household and so they go to the jungle. You live in a household, you don't renounce them, you understand this through knowledge. So Baba says, in our case, everything depends on understanding. You understand that this is a vicious world, you have disinterest in the vicious world because you have understood the nature of these pairs of opposites. So you don't get trapped in Maya. So we do everything with understanding. We live the life of a yogi in the household through the power of understanding how vicious this world has become and how sweet we have to become to go to that sweet world. It all depends on that state of understanding within. So do you understand that much to make those choices? Yes, so, you know, when, so there is a, so sometimes, you know, you understand that somebody doesn't wish well for you and then they bring you something very nice, very apparently uh, attractive and very delicious but you will be very, very careful in taking a bite from that because you understand that this may not be good for you. So you know understanding is a very powerful tool. So Baba says it's not that we don't like it so we run away or something. We don't run away from anything we stay in the household, but we understand that we don't have to get trapped by attractions. And we work on that by following these three things. First is Amritvela. Second is purity of food. Be a Brahmin, cook your food, have it. That is pure food. And third is Settle your karmic accounts when they are coming in the household. Don't aggravate them. If you are coming from a position of weakness, you are aggravating your karmic accounts. So Baba says these three things. So each of you has to check for yourself how much attention you are paying to Amritvela, how much of... Um, you know, how much of importance you give to Amritvela and how much you use that time for your benefit, how much you pay attention to purity of food, how much are you able to defeat your attraction for impure food and how much you settle your karmic accounts because that is an indicator of how much you understand. Because, you know, sometimes when we ask, do you understand? Everybody says yes. But where these three things, when you are acting that way, they are an indicator that you really understand. Otherwise, you say you understand, but you don't because you are not choosing to be better. You are choosing to be bitter. And just the intention to be better is not enough. You know, I want to be sweet, I want to be sweet, but, but, but. So you keep saying this, you know, there are many buts, but I want to be sweet. No, that's not how you become sweet. You have to have the power of yoga and purity if you really want to be sweet. Because somebody who says, I want something and doesn't know the method or doesn't respect the method doesn't want to be that. Yes, so if you want to be something, if you want to do something, you have to learn the method. 
So I cannot say that I want to be a data scientist and not learn data science. <laughs> That's not happening. So Baba says, you have, you want to be sweet. I am the sweet, sweeter, sweetest Baba. I am teaching you the method. So you have to pay attention to the method. And the method is yoga and purity. And the method is settling your karmic accounts. So this is what we have to do through understanding. And this is why Baba in the slogan today says, Every thought and second of a soul who is an embodiment of knowledge are powerful. So Baba says, when you're really knowledgeful, when you really understand, then every thought and every second is powerful. It is not, it is not, it doesn't come from a place of weakness or you don't have ifs and buts. You know, you understand and you do accurately. That's a knowledgeful soul. And then in the blessing today, Baba says something very sweet to us. Baba says that when you remember that your father is sitting with you. So there is, a, there is another beautiful saying in English. They say, you don't worry if you know your father. So Baba says that never forget that I am with you. I am sitting right there with you, beside you. And when you remember that, then you will have to do what you have to do. It's not like you will not have to make physical effort or you will not have to settle your accounts that are coming your way. You will have to do all of that. But the difference is you will do that without worry. And when you worry, you are wasting that thought and energy in worrying which you had to use in settling, in solving. So Baba says, all your efforts are done through the same, you know, resources which you use up in worrying. So if you just did this one thing, so you know, people say that um, sisters who stay in the center. So you know, what is the difference between sisters who stay in the center and if you are in a household and you have that sense of I and mine. <laughs> so, you know, if you are not a complete trustee, what is the difference? We are both Baba's children. But where there is I and mine, there is worry. And where there is the sense I am surrendered, there is no worry. So, we also did the same thing that a BK staying in a household does. No difference at all. <laughs> Same Srimad. But if you are not a trustee, you do it with worry. And if you are a trustee, you do it without worry. And that makes such a lot of difference that if you are worrying, then you are wasting your time, thought, energy. A. Second, that worry doesn't allow you to take Baba's help because that worry comes between you and Baba or maybe the cause of that worry, I and mine comes between you and Baba. And when you know that I belong to Baba, Baba is with me and Baba is here and Baba is uh, you know, I'm receiving Baba's help, then you actually start receiving Baba's help and you don't waste your time, thought and effort in worry. But have you seen that, you know, maybe you know somebody very powerful, somebody who has the capacity to help you in a situation, some human maybe, but you are not able to be sure they will help you 
if you don't have a very good relationship with them. Yes, so this sense that Baba is with me, I am receiving Baba's help and there is nothing to worry. This comes from how much you have established that relationship with Baba. So Baba says, the saying is, you don't worry if you know your father. But the thing is, have you behaved like a child? <laughs> If you have behaved like a good child, if you have been a good child, then you are always aware of the father's presence. You are free from worry, you receive teach touchings and you receive success. But have you been a good child? Have you behaved like a good child? And have you been obedient? That's the big question. Okay, Om Shanti.